Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or so ago, I did an introductory video demonstrating the new people masking that's now in Lightroom. In that video, I mentioned that I'll be doing another video where I will go over in detail how I use people masking to edit a portrait. Well, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to work on this image. This is a totally unedited RAW file. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how I go about editing, editing a portrait in Lightroom. Now, what I do first are global adjustments. So before I even go into masking, I'll do some general global adjustments to this image. I'll go right to the basic tab. This was a low key shot and I want to keep it low key. So I'm going to go to the black slider and I'm going to pull that down a little bit more just to make that background a little darker going to go to the white slider and open that up a bit to make his face a bit brighter. That's really probably all I'm going to do there. I am going to jump down to the lens corrections tab and enable chromatic aberration and profile corrections themselves. This was shot with a DSLR and I need to check those because of that. Now, I'm still not ready for the masking, what I'm going to do now is go to the healing tools right here. And we're going to go to the first one. This is the content aware healing brush. And I'm going to adjust the brush size with the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. Then I'm going to come in and get any blemishes and moles and maybe stray hairs here and there that I think need to go. So you could do this relatively quickly. You come in and just kind of do, you know, paint on whatever you want gone. Usually, like a, a, a mole, I won't remove, although I am removing a number here. They're just tiny little moles here. And I'll move these ones on his neck, although I think I'm going to crop it a little bit from the bottom. His neck looks a little funny. So I think I want to do that. But we'll do these first. We'll just come in, I'll do this very quickly. That one there, there's a black head there, heads there. Oops, didn't want to do that. You accidentally move something, you got to put it back. You might screw it up. That. Like that. There we go, that's looking better. Okay, see this little like blood vessel on his eye? I want to get rid of that. I'm going to use the same content aware healing brush for that, but I'm going to zoom in a, mid a little bit. I'm going to hit Command Plus on my Mac. A couple times, it's Control Plus on a PC. I'm going to resize this brush. I'm going to hit the left bracket key to make it smaller. By the way, you could use the slider too if you prefer to resize the brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to carefully draw along this blood vessel and try to minimize that a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Now, you can see how I there's maybe just a little bit of red over here as I come off. Those go away. Those overlays go away. And you can see maybe... A, but I want to get in there, but I can't. What you need to do if you ever encounter this is go down to the toolbar. Let me open up the film strip first. Uh, the toolbar is this little strip of real estate right here. If you don't see it, it's directly below the image. If you don't see it, hit the T key on your keybar. It makes the toolbar appear and disappear. And over here on the far left of the toolbar, when you have the healing tools open, you'll see tool overlay. I have it set to auto. That means when I'm hovering over the image they're showing when I'm off the image they disappear if you want to need or need to get into somewhere and you can't because you have an overlay in the way change this text to never now you could come in and you could like get in there like that all right so just remember I always then put it back on auto that's what I prefer so just remember that uh, it helps a lot in many instances when you're using these different healing tools. I'm going to go back and fit this to screen. I'll go to left panel at the top and there. Now, I had mentioned that his neck didn't look right to me, so I'm going to crop it. I'm going to get the crop tool. I'm going to make sure the padlock is locked, and I'm going to keep the original aspect ratio. I'm just going to pull it up from the top to the bottom of his chin. Because his neck just looked kind of funny. So that's that. All right. I think I'm actually done with global adjustments now. So I'm ready to do this masking I've been promising you. We're going to go to the masking tool itself. Now you'll see at the very bottom, it's detecting people. And it found one person. If there was more than one person there, it would find them. And you'd have a little kind of icon for each person here. 
and then you could select the person you want to work on. Now, what you could do first before you select the person, just hover over that little icon or little thumbnail of the person to make sure it's selected the person properly. Sometimes it overselects, sometimes it underselects. Just make sure it's selected the person. In this case, it did fine. Click right on it now, and then you'll be able to do individual features of that person. Hover over those. You could just edit their skin, their body skin. You could see his neck there, his eyebrows, eye sclera, the white part of the eye, iris and pupil, lips, hair. All right, I kind of always kind of do the same order. I go to face skin first, so I'll click on that. And I'm going to create the mask for this face skin. Now, there's actually some presets in Lightroom for face skin. If you go up to the top here, this little drop down, and you go towards the bottom, you'll see two. One is called Softened Skin, and one is called Softened Skin Light. Let's try Softened Skin. And you'll see that that is way too soft. But there is an amount slider at the top, so you could just dial it back. See how you could dial it stronger, lighter? Or if you didn't want to use that one at all, instead you could use Softened Skin Light. Maybe you'd prefer that one. And then that one, maybe you want to dial that up or down. In this case, I kind of like softened skin, but not like that. I just want to dial it back. I think that looks pretty good. Now, one thing I should note about these effect presets that are here, uh, they're not in Adobe Camera Raw. So you'll find these here in Lightroom, but not in Adobe Camera Raw. They used to be in Adobe Camera Raw a few years ago, but they changed the format of these presets for Photoshop. Lightroom uses .lr template files for, we used to call these brush presets. Now they're called masking presets. So these masking presets, if you found them on your computer, they'd have the suffix .lr template. If you find them on your computer for Photoshop in Adobe Camera Raw, they're going to be .xmp. So they're a totally different format and they're not compatible with one another. And there's no way to convert the Lightroom, Lightroom .lr template masking presets to Photoshop's Adobe Camera Raw masking presets. Now you can convert Lightroom's older style presets, developed presets to Adobe Camera Raw. Just can't do these masking ones yet. Hopefully they change that in the future. All right, so we've done the skin. Maybe it's a little bit. What do you think? Dial it back. All right, now what I like to do next are the eyes. So I'm going to go up here, create a new mask. And we're going to go down to select people. We're going to select our person. Then we're going to go to the eye sclera. Let's go to the white part of the eye. Click create mask. There isn't a um, custom effect for or a preset effect for eye sclera. So what I'm going to do is just make it a tiny bit brighter. You don't want to go to just a little bit. Just a tiny bit brighter. Like a very tiny bit. And then I'm going to go down to saturation and I don't want to pull all the saturation out just a little bit because I don't want those red blood vessels to be showing up. There's still a little bit there. That looks pretty decent. All right, now let's go to the iris of the eye. So we're going to create a new preset. We're going to go down to select people. We're going to click on our person and then we're going to go to iris and pupil or create a mask. Now there's a, there's a masking preset for that. So we'll click this drop down. And we'll go to Iris Enhance. And you can see what that did. Want to see a before, after? There's before, there's after. Before, there's after. So you could go to the amount slider and increase it a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's create a new mask. Again, we're going to select people. We're going to select our person. And this time we're going to select lips. And we'll create the mask. And for this, I'm just going to take saturation. I'm going to make them a little more saturated. That's all. You can make them maybe just a touch darker. Just a little bit. Don't want it. I don't want it to look like he's wearing lipstick, but just a little darker. All right. And I think his hair's fine, but let's just do one. I'll show you. We'll go to create mask, select people, select our person, and then we'll go to, where is it? Hair. Create the mask. And let's go to exposure and let's make his hair a little brighter. And maybe we'll increase saturation. So there is our person. Now here is without the mask. All the mask I just did. I'll turn all those off. There's before. 
and there's after. Now, here's a total before after without the healing brush and all that other stuff, the content aware healing brush. There's before and there's after. Let me close masking down so we don't have those annoying overlays. There's before and there's after. There's before, there's after. So that's how I go about editing a portrait in Lightroom. Now, it doesn't matter if it's masculine or feminine uh, at all, for me at least. I do the same pretty much amount of editing in both, for both. Um, some people like to more heavily edit um, feminine portraits, whereas some people like me just kind of do them equally. I don't like to do a lot of heavy editing on portraits. I did heavier editing than I typically would have done on this portrait just so I could demonstrate the various tools to you. But that's how I would go about doing it in Lightroom, and I hope this helps you edit portraiture in Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.